What if you really want to become an expert in networking with Microtik devices? It is very rare when someone has access to a pile of routers that they can use for learning. And proprietary tools like Packet Tracer and VIRL are not going to do what you require. What you need is a network emulator that is capable of network equipment and end device virtualization, regardless of the brand, so that you can see with your own eyes how Microtik devices fit in real world networks. There are many network emulators out there. However, in this demonstration, we will build a virtual network using a completely open source tool called GNS3. And I will do it on a Linux desktop. If you are on Windows or Mac, you can follow along as well, but nuances might differ. For example, the installation. On the GNS3 website, there is an installation manual for different environments. Feel free to follow that. I am on Manjaro again, so here are the commands I used. There were several things I installed there from the Arc user repository. Previously, I already had libvirt, quemu and wireshark installed, so I don't need to install them again, but make sure you have them. And after that, we also have to add ourselves to the user groups listed on the website. I found that contrary to the instructions, I don't have to do this for uBridge. Now you should be able to start GNS3. On the first startup, it will ask you where you want to be running the images on. I installed the server on this laptop, so I will run it directly on this machine. But I could also access a physical server elsewhere, or I could set up a VM if I was running Windows or Mac. I can just click next, next, finish. After that, in my experience, it never starts up correctly the very first time you run it after installation. So just close it and reopen. The interesting thing about GNS3 is that it is actually not an emulator in the same sense as VirtualBox or Quemu KVM. Instead, it is a solution that can get the job done using several other emulators in the background. For example, it could have a VMware image and a Docker image working with one another in the same network topology. A cool thing about GNS3 is that it uses an open source solution for networking that was not inherently available in Vert Manager. If you watched my video about Quemu KVM virtualization, you remember that I had to manually create isolated networks to link VMs. This time, we have installed a solution called uBridge and GNS3 will use it to emulate wire connections. So connecting two devices will be as simple as point and click. However, the uBridge behaves in a similar manner to isolated networks where the Ethernet ports will show up as running as long as they have a wire plugged into them, even if the device at the other end is down. If you look under devices, there are two cloud icons there. Those are the means for a network to access the Internet. The one named cloud will allow any connected devices to essentially share your NIC, so they will join your home or office network that your computer is connected to. But unfortunately, it works just like Mac VTAP in Vert Manager. This is not very surprising as GNS3 and Vert Manager actually have the same libvirt stuff running under the hood. Let's look at the other cloud called NAT. If I try to add it, I get an error saying that vrbr0 was not found. It is short for Virtual Bridge Zero, which is part of the default network that usually gets created by libvirt. I do have libvirt installed, and since I am also using vert manager, the default network gets created and started by vert manager. If I quickly open it, you can see that I have a default network there, and it is simply down and not set to start on boot. So if I start it now and go back to GNS3, I can now add NAT Cloud and it will work. An interesting implication is that devices connected to the default network in Vert Manager are on the same local network as devices connected to the NAT cloud in GNS3. So they can communicate with each other and you should take that into account if you were to use them both at the same time. Now obviously, you do not need Vert Manager if you only want to use GNS3. 
So if you need to add the default network through the CLI, first use Versh Net List to check if it doesn't exist already. But if it is not there, just type Versh Net Defined slash etc slash libvert slash quemu slash networks slash default dot xml. This will create the default network based on the same template that is used by Vert Manager. And then you can version net auto start default to make sure that it gets enabled every time you log into your computer. Then you can start it or just log out and back in. The virtual bridge zero should show up under IP link and you can add the NAT cloud. Okay, time for the good part. Let's add CHR to our available devices. If you click the new template button, there is an option to install from their server, but a lot of the available images still require you to download the image separately. CHR is one of them. So to quickly make sure we have the latest version, we can just download it straight away from the Microtech website and then pick the manually create a new template and click next. This perhaps is not the best UX design, but we are now in the preferences again, and we can add custom images through here. We will pick Quemo VMs, click new, name it CHR 7.7, as that is the version I got, add as much RAM as you like, leave the console type as Telnet, and then we can pick the image we downloaded. When prompted, agree to make a copy of the image, and then you can click finish. The CHR can now be used in a topology, but it does have only one CPU core and only one interface. So we should just edit the CHR template so that every time, every CHR that we add has two CPU cores and say eight interfaces by default. That is the most difficult part done. Now we can start building network topologies using Microtech devices. You could create a topology involving images from other manufacturers, but typically you have to acquire them yourself. For further demonstration, I will simply create an all Microtech VRF setup that will allow me to use and address several routers with the same configuration and the same IPs. Big thanks to Olga who showed me how to do this. If you want to learn more about VRF, I suggest you watch Olga's video on VRF. All right. I won't get too deep into the VRF details as the point of this video is to just demonstrate the process of creating a virtual Microtech topology in GNS3, but all the details are there if you want to recreate my setup. Here's the topology I created. There is a router that would be handing out IP addresses to devices, and I named it Office. It simply has all ports bridged and a DHCP server set up. If I wanted, I could add other desktop VMs, for example, and connect them to this router. By the way, you can add any desktop VMs you want, like Ubuntu or Kali, and run them from GNS3. I tried to import some existing VM images from Vert Manager, but there were some compatibility issues. So if you want full-blown desktop VMs, I suggest you download untouched VM images, make sure they are converted to QCOW2 or RAW image formats, and then you can add them as Quemu templates, just like we did with CHR. On the bottom of this topology, I created three routers that have the same configuration apart from their identity, so that we can tell the consoles apart later. These routers just have a DHCP server running that is handing out addresses similar to Microtech DevConf addresses. At the heart of this setup is the gateway on which I created three VRF interfaces, one for each router at the bottom. Then there are three static IPs from the office network that I can use to set up NAT to my three routers. And then of course there are three DHCP clients running, one on each VRF interface. The important thing to note here, for this VRF setup to work, you need to make sure the add default route is set to no, as each VRF route has to be added separately, and we don't want them to be overridden. Then some important magic happens in Firewall Mangle, where we mark a connection that is destined to an address that we want to NAT router 1 at, and then we can use that connection mark to assign the correct VRF routing mark. This is done for all three routers. In Firewall NAT, we just do two things. First, the destination addresses that we created for NAT get changed to the default router IP. 
so that when those routers receive their packets through VRF, the destination is correct. And then there is also SourceNet happening to make sure that those routers at the bottom can send replies back to the gateway. In this case, the to address is simply set to the first address that would be handed out by the DHCP server. So if router one had other DHCP clients connected, for example, it could mess up this setup. Finally, there are the static routes I mentioned. Each VRF needs to know what gateway to use when communicating with networks that are outside of their little bubble. In this case, the gateway IP belongs to the DHCP server running on the office router. Now, if we test this out, I can go back to the office router and SSH into router 2 or any other of the three routers using the addresses that they have been natted to, even though they have the exact same IPs in their configuration. I will conclude this here. You have everything that is required to now build almost any Microtech virtual Ethernet network that you can imagine. The only thing that would be nice to have is wireless. But the functionality depends a lot on the interface model and other factors like the antennas and interference. So it would not be very practical even if we could somehow add wireless in GNS3. This is a tool for wired topologies and you can learn a lot about networking and most likely do it faster than in a real world environment. All right, have fun.